Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code get100. That's code get100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. The following production is part of the We Be Geeks podcast collective. From days long ago, from uncharted regions of the universe, comes a legend. The dream that came through a million years, that lived on through all the tears. It came here, the Fandom Nexus. Fabulous secret powers were revealed to our host as he plugged in his microphone. I have a podcast! Here he is, your spider pan, Jeremy. It's me, it's me, it's that, well, it's not the D.O. Double G, though I'm not the road dog. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, as it says, I am your Spider-Man, Jeremy. And it's time, of course, to enter the Fandom Nexus. Uh, it's our little division of Neverland, where we all just enjoy everything. And, yeah, Lost Boy Phil is with us again this hello, week. Hello, because hello, Because if we're going to talk about uh, Masters of Universe Revelation, we got to have the Lost Boy Phil with us. We do the best we can. We do the best, because you've been collecting as much as I have, in fact, more than I have, of some new Masters of Universe Origins toys. So, oh yes, we were super excited about that. We will have a full review of that later. We've also got lots of fun things to be able to talk about. We've got some a little bit of news from the 15th anniversary over there in Walt Disney World. We've got a lot of new trailers, including Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yay. New trailers that just dropped the day that we're recording. Lots of fun things to talk about. So, you know what? Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get to some of it. So, all right, first, of course, we do want to go through our, our typical host chatter. Now... I've thrown in a different thing. I almost could say, what have you been eating? Because, now, this has been a few weeks ago. We found the this, uh, I like cereal oatmeal. I think General Mills have been putting these mm-hmm. out because there's a Cinnamon Toast Crunch, a Cocoa Puffs, Lucky Charms, and Trix that have oatmeal. And then it's just got a topping. And for, in general, all of these you're putting cereal on In General top Mills, you mean. <laughs> yeah, there's like different. Yeah. And the, the packets of oatmeal, they, they seem like they hold less oatmeal than what you get normally in a regular packet of oatmeal. I think these were aimed for kids. But we had to try those things out because it's cereal oatmeal. And we're kids. And Yeah, and we're big kids. Stuck in adults. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> we had stuck at being, you know, we're just big kids. So we were trying these out. Uh, I've been taking them actually to work. And eating them there. Now, the fun thing is, is okay, so my dietician, mm-hmm. what I, you know, because I'm diabetic and I go to an intracatologist and a whole team. My dietician said that I needed more protein. And one of the suggestions was, okay, eating oatmeal is good because it, it keeps my blood sugar down. Yep. And it's a slow burning carb, so it stays with yep. me a bit. But I need to get more protein to feel fuller. And also I need protein. And one of the recommendations was to, instead of using the water, 
put milk in it. Mm -hmm. Well, now how appropriate is that, that here I'm eating a cereal yep. oatmeal yep. and I'm using milk. Now the challenge with milk and also with these packets is it, it tells you how much of a measurement of, of water or milk. It does say milk is an option, uh, but the it has a measurement on there. But normally I'm used to like even the, the Walmart great value brand, the bag that you get the oatmeal out of when you empty it has a line that you can see and you can fill the water up to the line and do that and you've got a measurement. These packets didn't have that, so I had no way to measure, so I've been kind of guessworking uh, yeah. on milk to try to get the consistency because water evaporates a bit in the microwave, milk doesn't. Yeah, it's true. So I've had some pretty runny stuff. Well, I'll tell you what I'd, I'd personally do. Uh, I put just a smidge of water in there, and then I, because uh, I, I like it not to be float meal, as, as to quote a friend of mine. <laughs> float meal, yeah. And so, therefore, I put just a smidge of water, and while, after it raises, I, I then add a little bit of milk. Just a little bit. Mm. That way you have a, a, sm a smidge of both. And I'm replacing the whole thing. And so that's what I do. I put a little bit of water, not a lot, but enough to do what it, the job, about half of what you would normally do. And I mix it up as it goes. And then I add a little bit of, of milk. Therefore, you have both, but not well, a lot of milk. Well, instead of doing both, I'm just flat out milk. There, you're milking it. I'm milking it for everything it's worth. <laughs> I certainly am. Uh, so, so what was your favorite of the bunch? But anyway, so I've had it very, very runny. Uh, and then I've, I've started to kind of get in the balance about right. Mm -hmm. and I know where it is because it, it doesn't, it, it will thicken up a bit, a little bit. So I found the balance. Uh, first one I tried was the tricks. Yeah. And that one was not bad because uh, I noticed the, the oatmeal had a kind of a powdered flavoring to it to make it Tricksy. kind of, well, no, the, the oatmeal itself, before yeah. you even put the tricks on it, yeah. had almost a milky cream. That's true. Well, they powder. have a little bit of seasoning, and I noticed yeah. they even had a little bit of a Trixie flavoring. Not much, but a little bit of Trixie flavoring yeah. in that. And then, because I tasted it before I put any of it in there. <laughs> and so, I was just curious. And they have that. And then they, they have these little bitty bits of tricks type stuff. Yeah. It's not the big round. Yeah, it's not bits, the big yeah. fruit size things. They're like little nuggets. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's the only way I can think of it is they're like nuggets. So yeah, so the tricks was pretty good. I kind mm -hmm. I kind of like that. That's where I was still getting kind of runny, and I yep. was actually able to kind of half drink my oatmeal. <laughs> uh, I started, but I, I think after that, I actually had bought some s'mores mm. oatmeal. Oh my goodness, with milk in it, That's with a some marshmallows brand, and right? chocolate. Yeah, it's a different. Uh, I, we found it Qua in the same. Yeah, it's Quaker. Thing. Uh, I, yeah, I think Quaker was making those, and it's aimed at a kid size. But the s'mores was actually really good. Uh, but the, I, I kind of like the tricks. The tricks was pretty good. The cocoa puffs were fantastic. That's my favorite because <laughs> it's it's chocolate, and then I've already used milk to make it. So oh, it was like a milk chocolate goodness. I also like the uh, the oh, uh, I, I gotta go back to the old song snap. I mean not snap. I meant to say uh, um, oh, what is it? Cinnamon, Cinnamon toast, crunch. toast crunch. Love that one. Of yeah. course, when I'm eating it. It's the same as just having like a cinnamon oatmeal. It's they have really a little sugary. bit. Yeah, they do have a little bit of the sparkly, yeah. sugary stuff in yeah, there. Yeah, the topping is like yeah. the, the sugar. Because the cinnamon's already in the oatmeal and mm. you're just adding the sugar on top. Yeah, so the cinnamon toast crunch really didn't seem all that different to me. No, not from normal much. oatmeal. But what was really different and the one I kind of didn't care for was, of all things, Lucky Charms. Because yep. it just gave you marshmallows to put on top. And when you got an odd consistency of the oatmeal and the marshmallows start to kind of become yeah. mushy... It kind of turned my stomach I, by the second day I was eating. I, I must admit, the uh, first time I tried it, I didn't care for it all that much. Second time, I let the oatmeal cool down quite a bit before I put the marshmallows on it. Because mm. it, the marshmallows, once it melts into it, I mean, I mean to tell you, the, the dye that you see in the marshmallows, the color of, of it and all, whoo, that is some thick stuff. <laughs> it's runny. Yeah. It's thick. It's like having syrup. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying I don't like it because there is another flavoring in there that they, I think they kind of try to give you a little bit of that sugary grain stuff that you get with your uh, cereal. Because that stuff does have some sugar stuff on yeah. it a little oh, bit. Yeah. But, oh, man, that those marshmallows are... When they get to melting, ooh, <laughs> yeah. it, it's like it's like when they melted to oatmeal. It was not great. <laughs> yeah, it but was... I still like it. And uh, so I, I, after I ate it for two days, I couldn't do the third day's worth of stuff, and I gave it to you. Yeah, right here I guess and that's I, why I, I'm going to cool down. I yeah, I put it in the fridge for uh, I don't know ten minutes or so. <laughs> yeah, so it's I not kinda, completely cold. <laughs> I can't. I can't do that. I got to eat while I'm working still. So, but yeah. So those, uh, I you know, I don't know if I'll get those again because they didn't really. They weren't as fulfilling as I wish they would have been because they're aimed for a child sized stomach and I don't have a child sized stomach. I have the stomach of a 40 year old, 44 year old fat guy. Uh, so, 
Uh, yeah, I have I have a dad bod, which I actually have learned on the uh, the Will Height and Wall show uh, that we carry at the radio station. The dad bod is in because it shows that you care enough about your kids or whatever. But women apparently really liking the dad bod these days. Well, uh, I'll have to keep telling myself that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, but that's uh, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Although I'm not a father, I'm old enough to be one. Um, so yeah, I went to college with people that I was old enough to be their father, and some of them realized it. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah. All right. So I, I'll be back to my apple, regular apple cinnamon oatmeal here uh, pretty quick. But so what have you been watching? It's not really a whole lot different here because I'm still watching my Blue Rays of Chuck because I still absolutely adore that show. Yeah, it's a good show. Uh, and OK, yes, we watched Masters of the Universe Revelation, but we're not going to talk about that right now. That We're going to do that at the end of the show as our main topic. That way, if you have not watched it yet, you can pause and come back because I don't want to spoil anything. But we're probably going to get pretty in depth because there was a lot of depth actually to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to talk about that all later. Uh, but what have you been playing? I actually haven't really been playing a whole lot of video games, but you're still making people on WWE 2K19. I've been doing you? that. I've been watching a lot of things. I've also been watching Everybody Loves Raven. I've been really? watching that. I actually just put that on my list on the HBO Max. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, I got to watch some Raymond. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of different things. That's oh. on Peacock. Yeah. And yeah. I forgot. Oh, Peacock. Yeah. And I, I forgot to put it in there on HBO Max, I guess, is where I've been watching Friends. Yeah. I finished the first season of it. Uh, Chandler's always been my favorite. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad for Jailer and some of the stuff because he had that girl he really liked and he had to fire her and yeah. he couldn't ha he work, couldn't work up the guts to do it because he liked her and was going out with her. I think he should have found a way to talk to her, but yeah, it all went bad. She stapled his hand or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's like there should have been a way that he could have been like, uh, I am really sorry and it's not my decision. I was told. By my my boss that I have to do this. Well, go back and talk uh, to him in 1995, and maybe you can help. Yeah, it's him. like yeah, because it's like, <laughs> look, I was supposed to have actually let you go, and I'm very sorry. There are some budget comebacks. You could have explained it really well, but Chandler's not good at explaining things well. But I also That's really what makes did, it so great. <laughs> I did enjoy when Phoebe came to work for him for a couple of weeks, and she's telling him all this stuff. Oh yeah, they talk about you in the break room. You're not as fun as you used to be. <laughs> yeah, nobody likes you. They call you Mr. Boss Man now. <laughs> That's right. That's such a funny show. So I'll start up for the second season probably this next week, which where they have the reversal. And now Rachel's going to pine for Ross while he has a girlfriend. And I'm thinking, I think like every other season, didn't they do that? One was going to pine for the other while the other I was won't the tell you. I, I won't somebody. tell you. <laughs> that seemed to be every time I would, I would watch for a while, then I would leave and I'd come back. It seemed like, oh, one of them was dating somebody else and the other one was, was pining for them all the way up until... Ross is about to get married, and he accidentally calls uh, his bride to be Rachel. Uh, I do remember I, that I was a big nothing. issue, and that is also the big episode where Chandler and Monica suddenly pop out of the bed, and they were both they were hiding. I know. say nothing. <laughs> yeah. Also, thought it was kind of cute when Joey had mistaken Phoebe for Ursula and and kissed her, thinking, "Oh, okay." And Phoebe kind of liked it. Yeah. I'm like, did Phoebe and Joey ever maybe you know because. Really, because you got Joey, who's just dumb, and then Phoebe, who's just kind of out there. She, she's not really dumb. She's, she's just in her own words. She's floopy. <laughs> she's a little floopy, yes. But yeah, uh, Heather and I have actually discussed this while watching. Phoebe's kind of our favorite of the girls. She's just a sweetheart. She really is, and she's just a little weird. But that's what we just love her. She's just sweet. Uh, I will yeah, say I do anything. enjoy Chandler though. Chandler's always got the. He's got all the great jokes. He gets all the one-liners. I won't tell you what happens, but uh, anyway. Okay. I so yeah, we'll move along. <laughs> All right. Well, I actually do have a little bit of news today. Spanning the Disney and Geek Universe to bring you the best in comics, toys, movies, and entertainment. This is news from around Neverland. You know, I really probably should change that one out, too. I still haven't made a new sounder for movie reviews and TV reviews like I used to have before I lost my hard drive. But that one, you know, we don't cover. Well, we, you know, I'm, I'm about to say we don't cover like Disney exclusively, you know, so much anymore. But here the first thing I have on there is with the 50th anniversary of, uh, of Walt Disney World coming out. They've got some photos they released of this big 50th medallion they put up on Cinderella Castle. Oh, cool. Looks really cool. Yeah, they did something similar to that during the, was it the 25th or the 30th? Uh, probably on each one, because I know Disneyland had a big medallion. Sure. And had a symbol for their 50th, and I think even the 60th. 60th, I think, is they even had like a, I almost wanted to say it was a sword, but I don't think it's, that's what it was. But they had kind of a neat, they have one actually up in Marceline at, in the museum. They have, I think, from the 60th. 
it's been a while since I've been up there because you know, I, you know, with COVID, I didn't get to go to Tune Fest this past year. Which, oh. which, oh, you know, I, I forgot to put this on my list of things. Like Tune Fest is going to be completely different this year. They're actually just bringing in the museum is running their own Tune Fest. I don't think the entire town is doing anything at all. But they're going to bring like Terry Hardin's for those who don't know who Terry Hardin is. She designed the the dragon in Paris. She also designed the terror dogs and Ghostbusters. Oh, a lot cool. of different stuff. She's awesome. I've never gotten to meet her. I would like to have her on the show sometime. Uh, so I'm hoping I might be able to go, but it'll, it's going to cost me for each speaker I would want to go see. So uh, they're actually running some speakers right now. Chris Lucas, who was a previous guest, was actually there this past weekend. Jeff Barnes will be coming up there very soon. So if you can get to Marceline to go to the museum, there's a lot of great speakers coming up. Uh, also, uh, Planet Comic Con, I don't think I'm going to be able to get to go this year, but Jody Benson is going to be at Planet oh, Comic Con yeah. yeah, this that's year. Cool. Uh, of course, the Little Mermaid herself. Uh, so, yeah, Planet Comic Con in Kansas City this year is totally going to be worth going to. It's nice to have it back, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get there. I didn't get a chance to put a panel together, and I'm still broke. So, and if I do, well, I won't say anything. Yeah. <laughs> There's some opportunities I'm working on that might keep me busy during that weekend anyway. So, we'll, we'll see. But I don't want to get into that too far because, you know, yeah, it's a whole other thing. Uh, but, okay, something else, and some people were like, this is the internet, so people on social media have to jab at each other over this, and I'm just going to ignore the stupidity of it. But the Happily Ever After fireworks are ending on September 29th. Epcot Forever, which was temporary anyway, is ending on September 28th, basically right in time for new fireworks for the anniversary for 50 years. Cool. And I saw people jabbing at each other for like, oh, you, what are you saying? You're going to miss the Happily Ever After. You didn't even like when they put that in because you wanted wishes to stay around. Blah, blah, blah. Stop it, people. Stop it, okay? Just stop fighting over it. It's stupid. Uh, but yeah, so Happily Ever After. I never got to see that. I don't think I ever got to see Witches because when I was down there, we didn't watch the fireworks. We were too busy riding Splash Mountain because you can ride a lot of rides when the fireworks are going off. I would like to have seen a fireworks show while I was down there, but you know, I haven't gotten to go down there. And it has now been 12 years since yeah. I went. So maybe life will change for me and I'll get a chance to go. But yeah, so things are gearing up for the anniversary. Okay, but speaking of some new fun stuff. Okay. Uh, oh, granted, that's great. I've been buying you infla- inflatable. I don't think I have an inflatable for Halloween yet. I have looked at some stuff for Halloween. But that's pretty great. The Hitchhiking Ghost. Uh, there's a Pumpkin Mickey. Well, of course, Pumpkin Mickey, I think, has been available before. And a giant size that's like inflatable that. decoration. But the Hitchhiking Ghosts are going to be available as inflatables. Now, uh, it says the two new Disney Airbone, Airbone inflatables by Gemmy or Jemmy uh, are coming soon for Halloween season. Now, it doesn't say, you know, because this is in Disneyland news today. I have a feeling these might be specifically. Well, there it is, $129. But I don't know. Oh, look, Target. It says Target. Okay. Ooh, yeah. That I was fun. afraid it was only going to be available in the park. But, yes, it will be available at Target. And I'm not going to have $129 to spend on it. So as much as I'm going to pine for it every time we walk in and I see it, Heather's going to look at me like, no. Hitchhiking ghosts come out to social. Come out to haunt my yard. And they won't. <laughs> Way too high of a price. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I saw a tweet from Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane, you know, creator of Spawn, yes. has a toy line that they helped design. Fantastic. Yeah. Disney Miraverse. Okay, so here's I've met what, him before. Let me read what exactly he's he's uh, tweeted out here. He says Disney Miraverse and McFarland Toys are joining forces to bring to life battle ready Disney and Pixar characters from Kabam's upcoming Disney Miraverse mobile game. The first wave of action figures will be available for pre order soon, so stay tuned. I don't know exactly what Miraverse is. But I can't help but think of Star Trek. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say the same thing. I couldn't help but think of a Spock with the. You know, with the, beard, the, with the uh, little goatee yeah. thing. I should have probably done a little bit of research and maybe I, I, you know, I'll get on your app and take a look now because sometimes you can like not pre download an app, but you can reserve to have it download when it becomes available. I think Philip's looking it up right now. Uh, so, Disney Mirrorverse, I don't know what this app is, but it's going to be enough to where there's going to be toys out there for this. And uh, I don't know, where can I put more toys? I'm trying to look at wall space here. Um, I still have more Master of the Universe toys I'd like to get, and I don't have room for them. But I'm going to find a way to have more toys. Disney Mirrorverse is an upcoming crossover mobile role-playing game. The game features uh, evolved and amplified versions of Disney and Pixar characters and combines RPG with combat and fighting gameplay. Sounds like something that should be good on a console. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, it looks fun. 
It looks fun. Looks a little different. It's like yeah. the character's recognizable, but they've been given a lot of fun high sci-fi kind yeah. of gear. Yeah, it does. It looks like a lot of fun so far from what I'm seeing. Huh. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So next thing coming around. So I wish we had an FYE store somewhere around here. I don't know that we have one. Maybe at Independence Center. Oh, he's showing me pictures of the toys. Oh, my goodness. Those are so cool. Yeah, very cute. Oh, they're 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 cute, but they're kind of almost high tech. I mean, look at Buzz Lightyear. He's all buffed out. Looking. Yeah, Mickey looks adorable. Mickey's I like it. Mickey's kind of sorcerer Mickey style, but he's got white and gold. Yeah, and he's got that that. And is this Woody down ir- here? Irritated oh, look. Like that's a, goofy there. Oh, that's goofy. He looks like he's wearing Woody's clothes. Yeah, that's cute. Uh, but anyway, so Fye stores have Masters of the Universe cereal. Oh, I you can that. order this online. <laughs> Do you want it bad enough to spend fifteen dollars for a small box of cereal? No. <laughs> there you go. That's the problem right there. But you can't order it online, and I'm not going to because I'm not spending the $15 just so I can have some cereal. Star Wars Clone Wars figures. Now, okay, you're going to say to me, they already have Clone Wars figures. Yeah, but they didn't have off the 2D Gendy Tartakovsky series. Oh, that's cool. Look at these. This was on StarWars.com, a black series and a vintage collection celebrating the Clone Wars 2D micro series. These things look Amazing and awesome. Of course, there's images. There we go. Here's the actual box art. You got an Isla Sakura figure. Looks fantastic. A Luminara Unduli figure. Uh, here is Barris Ophi. I like how it has the cartoon uh, pictures oh, yeah, the, on the box. It's, yeah, it's like a vintage box, and it has artwork from the cartoon. And then an ARC Trooper captain. And another ARC Trooper. A battle droid. Oh, those are neat looking. These look really, 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 really cool. Uh, I'm not sure when they're supposed to hit stores. Maybe they've already hit stores and I didn't realize it. I still get excited every time I see a Frozen Han picture. I can't help myself. I I don't know what it (laughs) is. Big fan of Frozen Han for some reason. Yeah, I just love Frozen Han. He's just like Han Sickles. Well, that's one of them. (laughs) Now, uh, in the world of animated movies, DC's been doing really good with making different animated movies. Yes, I love them. I love them. Injustice. I can't wait. Based on the popular Gods Among Us game, as well as Tom Taylor's Gods Among Us Year One comic. Which now, if if this goes over well, will they do Injustice 2? Hopefully. Which this was, yes, it's a game. It's a fantastic fighting game by some of the makers of Mortal Kombat. I I, I had it before when it first came out. I still have it. I have both of those games. But yes, it's a fantastic game. The basic idea is the Joker tricks Superman into killing Lois and setting off a nuclear bomb in Metropolis, Superman loses it and kills the Joker and then becomes the tyrant he always could have been because who could possibly stand against him? Of course, this is another reality. It's not the right. reality. Right. I mean, it's part of the multiverse. Multiverse stuff, yeah. But it's an intriguing story. And there's even comic books where they have Masters of the Universe versus Injustice. I have one now. Where, <laughs> yeah, which you have the entire set. I have yeah. some of the comics, but you actually bought the full graphic yeah, novel. Yeah, I've read I it all, yeah. read it all. But uh, it was basically where they, they, they cross over to Eternia and they recruit He-Man to fight Superman. Which is like, oh my goodness, that is so cool. So, all right, here's the other thing. And I, I, I can't remember if I brought this up before. Silverhawks is being reanimated by the Nacelle yes. company. Mm-hmm. And there's yeah. new toys of the original. Right. There's new toys coming. I will be ordering a couple. <laughs> yeah. They're going to be expensive. And new yeah, ones as well. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, but Nacelle, those, those are the people who have been doing the toys that made us, the movies that made us, and Wonderful. stuff like that. They're reviving it, but now they're saying reanimated, which I don't know if that means they're going to just take the audio from the four and just fix up the animation. That'd be kind of neat, though. That would be neat. Or because it, it, it could be a full reboot, but they're saying they're reanimating it. I'm not sure. Not rebooting, means. reanimating. Huh. Like they might be doing the same stories, but they're going to just plus well, that, the that's, animation up. That's one show that I always wanted to see into a film. Or be some, awesome. the, the thing about that show is, uh, don't get me wrong, don't hate me. I love Thundercats. I absolutely adore Thundercats. And this is by the same people. Right, Rankin Bass. But one of the things about Silverhawks, I always thought it was underrated. Yeah. Uh, by a lot of people, they went so nuts over Thundercats, and I did too. I still have some of my old toys and of Silverhawks. But one of the problems I had was Silverhawks only had one season, yeah. and Thundercats had two, and so I never got my fix on on Silverhawks. <laughs> and so I always wanted to see what was going to happen near the yeah. end of the season. You had a couple of new characters come in that were pretty darn cool, and I wanted to see more of it. I wanted to see what was going to happen, but I always thought it had that really cool Star Trek meets you know he man meets all these other great things it's thundercats in space that's what it was <laughs> it really but it was, was but it was cool because you had kind of a federation thing going on yeah 
And I really loved it. Like Voltron had a Federation. It thing. was, and I loved it. It was really kind of a, a cool, you know, Robotech-y thing. Yeah. And I wanted to see more of it, but I never got to. And you've had Thundercats out the wazoo and He-Man out the wazoo. Don't, and I'm not complaining. I love it all. Right. Uh, you, I can never get enough as long as you don't go goofy like they did with the newest Thundercats. And that's just my complaint. Yeah. But <laughs> but at the same time, uh, I want more Silverhawk. So I'm thrilled about this. And yeah. the yeah, new yeah, toy yeah. line has me so excited. It's expensive as heck, but I'm yeah. excited. <laughs> well, the funny thing about Silverhawks is it would come on on weekdays. I remember over the summer, it would come on at 8 o'clock. And I was, I'd watch Silverhawks every morning. And then one Monday morning, I went in and Silverhawks didn't come on. Oh, yeah. Instead, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the miniseries. Yes. Over the summer. And it even came on again in the afternoon. Now, apparently this wasn't the first time it had aired. No. Because a lot of other places had aired it like during the the, the, the like, school year as a miniseries. But this is the first time I got to see it. Yeah. And I was kind of like, well, what about Silverhawks? But then suddenly there was, I loved the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I did. I related. So. I always related with Leonardo. Yeah. And I always, always was. So, you know, <laughs> that's yep. just me. I had no idea I'd be a leader myself at some point. So, with an upcoming movie, which we're going to talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife Yay. in a little bit, there are new toys coming. Woo-hoo. And I'm sure there's going to be some specific Afterlife toys, but I also have Ghostbusters Fright Features. Oh, uh, what it. Imagine if when Kenner had made the real Ghostbusters figures, if they'd have made figures that actually looked like the movies. I would have went nuts. This is what these look like. And they come with toy ghosts that open up. And the fright feature is the ghosts. And I love it. the weird thing is, like, there's two versions that you can find on, like, Ghostbusters News is where I've been seeing a lot of this. Although, apparently, Walmart.com has been showing these. And you can maybe pre-order now. I want them. <laughs> so here's a Peter Venkman. And he's got this, uh, what is it? I think he's called Muncher. Muncher, who's a new ghost from the new movie. Cool. But they also have him pictured with a terror dog. Like which that. we have seen in the trailer, by the way. They are in the new movie. Cool. Uh, then here's 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 Ray. They did a good job. That oh, looks like that looks Act, just right? like it. It's a repainted kind of uh, Muncher. Winston has what looks kind of like a marshmallow mini that opens up, Cute. Uh, but he also has an alternate with a Slimer. Oh, that's what I like. <laughs> and here's Egon also with like a marshmallow mini, different color, and different painting. And there's also a fright feature of the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man where he kind of stretches I and, and you open it. his abdomen and he's like gooey looking. I love so it. So he's got like marshmallow stuff hanging I down. I love that the prices are great. Uh, yeah, $10 for these. $9.84. That's awesome. Uh, they also have a Muncher figure, which the Muncher, uh, he seems to have a thing where he launches. Now, the, I noticed a video of Ghostbusters News, this little ball he has in his mouth of metal. If you look, there looks like there's a license plate that says Ecto-1. Oh. So we don't know what that means, uh, that it's going to eat the Ecto-1 or something, but it spits it out. And you look, he's got an open stomach where you see he's got a fire hydrant and a stop sign. Apparently he's eating. Well, I, I did hear in one of the interviews that there is a new ghost that's similar to Slimer. And I, yes, I imagine that's him, Muncher. Muncher. Yeah, that's awesome. Except for instead of eating food, he likes to eat metal and junk. Oh, I love uh, it. There's also some photos of a new proton pack, which awesome. is sold separately from a ghost whistle, which has something to do with the movie. Uh, so lots of new toys coming out. I will be collecting the proton no, pack because I can't no. wear it, but no. I might get some of the toys just because those are great. <laughs> yeah, that's great stuff. I would have loved to have had that when I was younger and even now, who am I kidding? <laughs> yeah, I, I'd love to have it now. I'd yeah, I'll spot to hang it next to the yeah. real ghost pushers. I still got a lot of my all. old toys from when I was younger. I still got the old uh, building I got when I was a little older. My mother and father saved it. So some of my stuff was stolen, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately. However... I, they didn't get everything, so I still had some of that. Now, my Ecto-1 was taken. I had two of them. Uh, they were taken, and uh, I'm hoping that they'll bring out the Ecto-1 again so I can get it because I really want it. I don't care if it's it exactly like the old one, but, boy, I want one real bad. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to keep the show moving, sure. and so it's time to go visit the trailer park. Mama, now the gator got in the house. Now the gator? Give me that sugar. Go ahead. Oh. Oh. Get him, Mama. Oh. Get that gator. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The Neverland Trailer Park. All right, so this week we had a brand new trailer for the upcoming Dune film. My planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. Rolling over the sands, you can see spice in the air. The outsiders ravage our lands in front of our eyes. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. 
what's to become of our world. Oh, boy. <laughs> Duncan, can I trust you with something? Yes, always, you know that. I've been having dreams about a girl on Arrakis. I don't know what it means. Dreams make good stories. And everything important happens when we're awake. Who are you? You want some muscle? I do? No. We are House Atreides. There is no call we do not answer. There is no faith that we betray. Smile, Gurney. I am smiling. The Emperor asks us to bring peace to Arrakis. House Atreides accepts. I know you. There's only a way of hanging my mind. You need to face your fears. Come with me. You need to be ready. You never met Harkness before. They're not human, they're brutal. It's Duke's son, he sees too much. He says, I do kill them all. God in heaven. Get everything with guns off the ground, go! This is an extermination. They're picking my family off one by one. Let's fight like demons. Dad, what was on that? The future of House Atreides. A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. But if your answer is no, you'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. My son. If anything happens, will you protect Paul? With my life. Only together can we stand a chance. Yes, uh, what y'all couldn't see is Philip pointing at the screen every time he recognized the face of somebody. Because, I mean, goodness, this is Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin, Zendaya. Uh, Batista. Dave Batista, yes. Uh, as it says here, this is an Oscar, uh, Oscar nominee, Denise Villeneuve, who's director of Arrival and Blade Runner 2049. He's directing this for Warner Brothers. Uh, this is a big screen adaptation of Frank Herbert's seminal bestseller of the same name. And he uh, he wrote, I think, at least two or three books, and then people have continued it on. I've gone through, I know, at least two books and audiobooks. I don't remember everything. But uh, here's the description it has here. A mythic and emotionally charged hero's journey, Dune tells the story of Paul Atreides, a brilliant and gifted young man born into great destiny beyond his understanding, who must travel to the most dangerous planet in the universe to ensure the future of his family and his people. As Melvin and forces explode in, into conflict over the planet's exclusive supply of the most precious resource in existence, a commodity capable of unlocking humanity's greatest potential, only those who can conquer their fear will survive. Yes, spice is everything in this. And that's, you know, like the blue eyes that you see. Uh, I mean, this, I mean, the book is really flipping epic. Yeah, I mean, and I'm trying to they've tried to make movies of this before. They have miniseries. They, there was a movie in the 80s, in, in 84, 85, whatever it was. Yeah, and they never seem to quite capture they it. Can't, they, yeah, the miniseries did OK, but it didn't quite do it. And they've tried so yeah. hard. I'm hoping this time they've got it. It looks cool. Yeah. So I'm hoping now because, I mean, technology is finally caught up with the epic scope of the effects that you could do. To make this as real as possible, uh, so I, if they stick to the book as cl as tightly as possible, I think they have something golden here. Now I won't know exactly if they've stuck to the book because it's been a long time since I went through the audiobooks. Yeah. I, might, I might have to go maybe get myself a copy again. Who knows? But I mean, the book was woo! It was so deep and vast of so much stuff happening in it, and then the see I can't even remember all that happened in the sequel. I mean, this this has been probably twenty years ago. I mean. <laughs> 
I never went through all of it. I went through most of it as a kid, parts of it here and there, but most of it was based off the movie too. And the movie didn't do that well, unfortunately. Yeah. They even the toy line they had. <laughs> yeah. And, but I there's so LJN. much of the book they couldn't do in those movies, really. Yeah, they, they didn't have But now movie. there's no like Lord of the Rings. There there was attempts previously to do Lord of the Rings and they just couldn't capture it. Yeah. But having the rag technology in the early two thousands, like, oh look, now we can do Lord of the Rings and give it justice to to the, yeah. the property. And Lord of the Rings, they did pretty good. The, the Hobbit, we won't talk about this. The Lord of the Rings movies though were yeah. real pretty epic. Well, you for, try to put too much into it, really. The, yeah, the Hobbit should have been one movie. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a whole other different thing. Yeah. Not no, there's no way to do Hobbit in two movies. Yeah. The Hobbit is a short children's book. Three, four, five. Yeah, and they just they I don't think they even needed one three hour movie to fit it all in. But it was all the extra junk they've pushed into it that really but yeah, the Lord of the Rings, they actually captured all of it. And if they can keep on that level, then Dune, this could be a success, and maybe we'll get even the second book. Now, this is something I didn't realize I'd heard something about, but uh it's called Star Trek Prodigy. It is a uh, aimed at children. It's an animated series coming very soon to Paramount Plus. No one shall escape. I'm getting out of here to a better life. You're the only one who still thinks he can. What will happen if they catch us? Like it or not, you're stuck with me. I tried to save you. And now we can save each other. What is all of this? Our ticket out of here. We've only just begun. There are a lot more stars than I thought. So this is coming in the fall on Paramount Plus, and it says here, developed by Emmy Award winners Kevin and Dan Hagerman of Troll Hunters and Ninjago, the CG... I th- aren't they the same people who did the Lego movie? Probably. No, I don't think so. Uh, but this is a CG anime series, Star Trek Prodigy. It's the first Star Trek series aimed at younger audiences and will follow a motley crew of young aliens who must figure out how to work together while navigating a greater galaxy and search for a better future. Six young outcasts that know nothing about the ship they've commandeered. They stole a Federation starship from the look of it. It's the first in the history of the Star Trek franchise, but you're going to get me in a copyright strike. Knock it off. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but over the course of their adventures together, we'll each be introduced to Starfleet and the ideals it represents. So, yeah, they're like, it looks like they're slaves at the beginning of this and trying to escape. They find a Federation starship and hop on it. And uh, Philip Space, as soon as he heard the first few notes of Star Trek, he was like, oh, his Kirk came out. I can't help it. It's the way I am. So, yes, this <laughs> well, we this might be fun and worth checking out. And so yeah. hopefully it's a way to maybe introduce your kids to Star Trek. Because I remember when I was a kid and Star Trek would come on like, uh, like okay, because I remember... Masters of the Universe, He-Man, the Masters of the Universe at 4.30, Batman at 5, and then Star Trek would come on. Or, or some, well, I, well, I think it was a little earlier than that, but I remember Star Trek would come on, and I was never really interested in Star Trek as a kid. It seemed boring to me, uh, but I didn't understand it. Bless me. <laughs> I, I'm four years old. Still. I mean, good. Oh, well, no, I guess I was older than that. I was three, four, five, five, six years old when I was, you know, Star Trek comes on TV. I didn't, you know, I was like. Okay, well, it's cool. There's a starship. It's not Star Wars, though. True. As when you get older and you can understand Star Trek is when you realize this is awesome. Yes, yeah, because of space. The final and it's the final frontier. <laughs> and although I did enjoy when I was younger, like I saw the Wrath of Khan. I was like, this is pretty yeah, I cool. I love Wrath of Khan. It's my favorite. As still as a kid, you don't understand Wrath of Khan. But it has had some cool stuff kind of going on and some freaky stuff with the earworms. But yeah, so this is an aimed at younger audience. So this is a way I think you can get your kids to enjoy perhaps something that's Star Trek and then maybe work them into some Star Trek. Show them some movies or something eventually. So yeah, for all if you have some young kids. Oh, but here's the one we've all been waiting for. Ghostbusters Afterlife. You're a great mom. I don't know. I'm fine with Trevor. But with Phoebe... She really keeps me on the outside. That's normal. She's an awkward, nerdy kid. Maybe a new home could be an opportunity to start fresh. I just wish she could get into some trouble. There's still time. (sighs) 
what are you doing here in Somerville anyway? We're completely broke. And our grandfather left us this creepy old farmhouse in the middle of nowhere. Your father wasn't much of a homemaker. He could hardly keep the power on. You're saying he left us nothing? Well, I wouldn't say nothing. You went with the station wagon? It's the only one that had an engine. What is happening here? Somehow, the town with no fault lines is shaking on a daily basis. Maybe it's the apocalypse. Egon came out here for a reason. Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Have you or any of your family ever seen a spook, specter, or ghost? You guys hear that? Something's coming. The whole city. It's like the walking dead. Go, go, go! Ghostbusters, we're ready to believe you. We're closed. I've watched that so many times now today. Uh, It keeps getting better every single time I see see it. it. And the only description it really gives, I mean, it says he came out here for a reason. Uh, From director Jason Reitman, producer Ivan Reitman, comes the next chapter in the original Ghostbusters universe. In Ghostbusters Afterlife, when a single mom and her two kids arrive in a small town, they begin to discover their connection to the original Ghostbusters and the secret legacy their grandfather left behind. This film is written by Jason Reitman and Gil Keenan. Now, it's unfortunate it's not written at all by, uh, you know, like Dan Aykroyd or or Harold Ramis. But, you know, Harold Ramis, we unfortunately lost him. But it's nice that they've included him in here. I think that's also a great idea to have that this is Egon's grandchildren. Mm-hmm. I like it. it feels like a tribute to Harold Ramis. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, so I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, I'm noticing because we get to see a terror dog. But have you also kind of noticed that? When now, like you, you can see the earth is like erupting because something's coming from under the ground. It looks like an Egyptian statue, and one ghost, that monster kind of thing we see looks like an Anubis kind of thing. So I think there's some, you know, because we had ancient Babylon gods before, right? Yeah. Ancient Egyptian evil gods are coming to take over the world now. I think. I'm looking to see what whatever it is. I'm looking forward to. I've been looking forward yes. to it for quite a while. Now, hopefully. It's as good as the 2016 Jim. Oh, that that we don't pretend that we let's just let's, that movie doesn't exist. It's oh. an alternate time. That was in a different universe a of multiverse. our own multiverse <laughs> that was split off somewhere. Loki is supposed to be fixing that and getting rid of all those alternate timelines. Okay. Uh, so as soon as Loki gets rid of that timeline, then we'll never hear of the 2016. Answer the call okay. movie ever again. <laughs> that was crazy. But that was uh, boy, yeah. Yeah, the soundtrack was kind of cool because it had like alternate versions of the the main Ray Parker Jr. Sure. Ghostbusters song. So I actually do have that soundtrack because I liked some of the music, and I was kind of half excited because it was a Ghostbusters movie. But yeah, it was disappointing as heck. I hope Vigo destroyed it. <laughs> yeah, Vigo, you mean Vigo? Vigo, I mean, yeah. Vigo. So, but this is from the original universe, and we yes. actually get to see. I mean, Janine, and it makes it kind of makes you wonder because Janine did did her and Egon ever get together, or did maybe with Lu- was she with Lewis in the end? Don't know. But Janine was there and, mm-hmm. and and talking about you know Egon. So and we get to see Ray's hand there at the end. And it Ray's occult books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, I love it. Oh, this is so great. Plus, I love the little mini puffs. I've already mentioned that in a previous episode. I yep. need a toy mini puff in the workshop. <laughs> I really do. I need a mini puff toy. And I I could see an entire collection of little figures in different poses, mini puffs doing different things. Especially in this one, we see one of them get stabbed by one of those umbrellas where it looks like he's got a carrot nose as a little snowman. I love that. I, I want one. Uh, I mean, they're printing their own money by even creating those things. Let's face it. They're like the Porgs, okay? Even if you don't like The Last Jedi, the Porgs were money. Yeah. All right? So <laughs> They're adorable. Oh, goodness. Okay. But now we'll warn everybody, if you have not seen Masters of Unit Revelation... 
pause this show right now, go watch it and come back because we're going to spoil the Dickens out of it when we give our review. So I'm going to give you a couple seconds. In the center of the universe, on the planet Eternia, looms Castle Grayskull, ancient fortress of mystery, its power sought by the dark forces of Snake Mountain, sanctuary of sin and sorrow, ruled by the demon Skeletor and his evil acolytes. And the only thing that stands in their way is Prince Adam, who defends the secrets of Castle Grayskull as He-Man, the most powerful man in the universe. Only four others share this secret. Guardians of Grayskull all, amidst an army of the honorable, committed to guarding Castle Grayskull from the havoc of destruction. For those who control Grayskull control the power, the power to be masters of the universe. Okay, if you're still here, if you are still here, I'm presuming you have watched it or you don't mind us spoiling the heck out of it. The short form of this, this was awesome. I loved it. It was great. And there are people who are, I, I, I don't listen to the negativity. Go and just check it out for yourself because there's people saying, oh, Kevin Smith lied. Oh, Kevin Smith has pulled a bait and switch because there's marketing that has He-Man. And He-Man is in every episode. He's just not the main character. But if you go back and watch the, even the Filmation series, He-Man was not always the main character in every episode. Orko sometimes was having a story. Tila had stories of her own. You know, sometimes she even had main stories focusing on side characters. And then, you know, He-Man was just there to finally deal with the problem. He'd show up maybe at the end. So, I mean, that happened a lot. And this was Masters of the Universe. Yeah. This was how many other characters getting a chance to step up. I mean, Stinkor, Spikor, Clawful. We saw so many characters. Roboto was amazing. Yeah, I love loved it. Roboto. But we got so much depth. And this is Tila's journey of coming from kind of, kind of a little spoiled Brad and kind of fool yeah. herself to now, you know, feeling betrayed, but having to grow up. Yeah. And she learns a lot of valuable lessons, especially the scare glow. Yes, scare glow. I said scare glow is in an episode, if you don't know. I love the way they did Oh, the scare glow episode was like therapy. It was, to, to, what I loved about scare glow was that he looked a lot like the toy, the old toy. And my yes. love was that you actually see him doing the whole glow thing, because I remember the old toy where you'd have to make his head glow. And then you yeah. see the glowing, uh, uh, the glowing on his body, because it wasn't always showing. Right, uh, not always. And then whenever you show uh, show that, you see that suddenly his skeleton parts of his, of his skeleton would be glowing. They did that in the cartoon. They did a really good job with it. I liked it. Yeah, it was so, so you cool. got to see people like that, Scareglow and others, mm -hmm. who you really didn't get to see in the old cartoon. Hero, yeah, Hero, and that and Wondar. And I like how they did all that. They made it like kind of like a, a heaven type area. Yeah, you know? the pre Eternia, which pre had the Eternia playset in there. Yeah, they did. They had the playset. Oh. I like that. It was it was a love a love song to the toys and, and does goofies who love I yes. talk about us fans I call us goofies nerds you know and that's okay yeah. I, that's not put down to us We're but this just, was great like, it's basically Tila's fear of inadequacy that she and I like it even started like the very first episode when Skeletor tells Tila oh this isn't the champion it's just his cheerleader yeah so she's kind of looked down even though she's accomplished a lot and she even she taught Adam how to fight. Mm -hmm. But she's next to He-Man, she feels very inadequate and not worthy of her role, which I think they really hinted a lot that she knows she's desperate for something. And she even talks about in the Scarecrow episode that she's afraid of it because yeah. she doesn't understand she's it. She's trying to hide. She's trying to hide that she knows that she's very powerful, but she's never relied upon any sort of magic. She's relied on her skills and her strength. But I think by when we get into part two, we're going to see her have to learn that to trust in that magic. Because I like she a lot is of the, the next sorceress. I like a lot of the things they brought out. Like they were kind of funny little hints and glow. For instance, uh, when you see uh, what's his name, the uh, force guy, uh, Moss Man. Moss Man. Oh, I love Moss, Moss Man. Man in this. Whenever uh, Skeletor kills him, uh, which he does, yeah. right, like he burns him up and he goes, "Smells like pine." That was that, that was a little toy yes. hint. You know, that was hilarious because. And one thing I love: some people say, "Oh, it's just like watching uh, Joker." Only if you're looking for it, because yeah. you do hear because it's Mark Hamill. You hear you, you hear, hear some Joker voice. here and there, 
But he sounds like Joker. He sounds like Skeletor. And he even sounds like a, a few characters and old actors back in the day. I even heard, and I'm not saying he was going for this, but I even heard little hints that sounded almost like Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Like, <laughs> sounds very much like that type of old, oh, type of character. Yeah, and th- those are the parts that there was somebody he was trying to mimic that he talks about. If you watch, there's like almost yes. a sixth episode where they're talking about live, and I couldn't understand who that, I don't know who that person was. But, but it I guess is Kevin Smith old, knew who that person was. That Some old, old type, uh, that old type of person, yeah, very, very theatrical, yeah, theatrical, dramatic. Yeah. Which for Skeletor works great. Oh, it is. He's better, holier than thou. Yes. I just wanted him to call Beast Man, you, you know, furry yeah. baboon or whatever, baboon. something. Well, you didn't get the old actor who and I can't think of his name right now. Alan, uh, yeah, Alan Oppenheimer got uh, yes. to be come back and be Moss Man. Yeah, that was Alan great. Oppenheimer was Skeletor. He was Man at Arms before. He was Stranger before. He did because really you only had like a cast of like five people in the original film. Yeah, you didn't get hard, and they all had to. Well, you, you know, can hear it sometimes. Like if you listen to the the original guy, I'm sorry, my brain's not working right. I can't remember the actor who did He Man originally. John Irwin. John Irwin. You can hear him doing other and voices. The characters. I mean, sometimes and there can, was only one woman, so every woman was done by the same actor. Yeah, you can hear it sometimes. Yeah, she will. She'll but she kind of really lighten her voice, but you can hear her once in a while doing the same. Yeah. I love how sometimes they would do actor impersonations. Like some, <laughs> there's this old Especially man with a long beard. The second beard. series in the 2000s, you had a really bad Sean Connery for Stratus. Yeah, what I loved was though in the original, you had this old man with a beard, and he's definitely being that uh, old man from uh, old Mary Poppins and all those. Oh things. yes, he's like, he's like oh, he man, and a little bit of Mad Hatter kind yeah, of sound. Like, yes, yeah. it's that same actor. He's like, yep, he's like, same actor. Uh, and he was on uh, just about every show, Twilight Zone. Yeah, he, he's like, I'm here, you know. Oh hey, yes, yes. He I'm man. Here, he man. I need your help. Prince Adam. We're gonna stop that meter from crashing into the planet. <laughs> I love oh, this. Yes, uh, it's great. So yes, because we love the old filmation. Now here's the thing, uh, where people are still trying to throw fit. I thought it was supposed to be a sequel or continuing to the filmation series. Okay, filmation still owns the right to the original series, so they couldn't do a sequel. But there's a lot of nods to the filmation. It's like a continuation. It's, it's kind of a continuation, but it's not because the shaping staff. We can see that in the first sure. episode. Although the shaping staff was broken, uh, and also Stridor, we see being used. But it's like an evil version of Stridor, so it's not the same Stridor that was set free. Yeah. It's uh, a, it's also, a, Roboto was different yeah, from the it, animated. It's continuation to the old classic style, is what right, saying. Yeah, it's from that. It's of that style, but it's not the, of like the They could have worded it different, but but yeah. they, he, they're trying to give you the idea that it's like the old yeah. classic stories that we know. It's a continuation of that. Yeah. From, from the old classic and making it new. But it's definitely not a reboot yeah. like the it's 2000s new, was. It's a new take on everything. Yeah. Uh, and they're even, they've developed the Masterverse, and that's all these toys are under the Masterverse mm-hmm. line, which the Masterverse, because there is a Masters of the Universe kind of multiverse, they've acknowledged because the mini comics started out a completely different thing where you had a jungle man. Uh, then eventually they adopted some of the filmation stuff in there. Uh, then you had the DC Comics, which is doing an entirely different thing. And then filmation came up with an entirely different thing. I have, and then I they, have that. I said I read it all yet either. The multiverse uh, graphic novel. Yeah, you novel. got that one yeah. where they can acknowledge all these different multiverses. You get to see uh, Dolph Lundgren style. Yeah, He-Man. A, every time they've done something new with He-Man, it's been a and different kind of thing. In fact, Jeremy, you have uh, over there, I'm looking at it. You have those little big headed. What do they call those? Uh, oh, um. I forgot. But yeah, the little mini minis. The little minis with the big heads. Um, I forgot who made bodies. those. They even have, yeah, I like them, the, uh, the mugs or whatever you want to call them. But but they even have those in that little comic of the multiverse where they, they have him fighting That's along fun. with, yeah, and they got several versions like a, of that, but they have those types of characters in that to show that they realize there's a lot of versions of yeah. He-Man. And, it, and I really like that multiverse type of thing. I've only gotten to look at it a little bit. I haven't read it all yet, but I like it because it's showing that there's a lot of He-Mans and they're all coming together to fight. I like the, the one picture I looked at. I love to see Dolph Lundgren <laughs> with the galaxy He-Man. That was the first basically spinoff, if you want to call it that, except for maybe the movie, but where they had the, uh, he Man, you know what was what they called? Yeah, what the was new it? adventures, the of new He-Man. adventures of He Man. The toy line they just started calling He Man at that point. Yeah, it was He Man because they wanted to. I don't remember what they called it exactly, but it was the new adventures of He Man. Yeah, was basically it. I didn't like that cartoon. Me neither. I tried. <laughs> I, I like actually that. tried to I force tried. myself a I year or two to go so to watch it. I tried so hard, and I I, I finally yeah, like, I, I just. just can't do there it. are fans of it though there are and you know the fun thing though about the multiverse because 
with every kid that had their toys at home coming up with their own stories. You had your own little version of mm-hmm. He-Man and how things went. In fact, uh, you know, Daniel Benedict, which we had probably first season, second season on this never this podcast, he created uh, that fan film. And he's a horror movie fan. Mm-hmm. And I, I've mentioned before, if you ever watch The Fall of Grayskull, it's very good, but it's it's some graphic horror movie level violence. But he's of the point where he'll make stories. He doesn't mind killing characters off. Yeah. Sounds a little familiar. Yeah. Um, of course, now I'm saying, though, in Masters of the Universe Revelation, which I find it funny people are saying Revelations. Yeah, it's, it's not. Revelation, just like the book of Revelation in the Bible. That's it's right. Revelation, not Revelations. But there are characters that may have died that I don't think really did. I yeah. think we're going to see them come back because magic has been restored to Eternia, which should bring at least one character back. Mm-hmm. One character can be remade. And I know one character you're not going to kill because Mattel would never allow it. Nope. Not to mention, we don't see this person die. Right. We didn't. See, the only one we, we well, we see Roboto kind of shut down. Yeah. Orko, we, he disappears. Yeah. Well, Adam, he's wounded. A door shuts to that. A door shuts yeah. to that where he's at. But he can come out. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, and that's one of the things that also was a different it's a drama, from, if the, you will. Yes. From the filmation series, I, and I like these episodes where uh, Orko goes back to Trolla with that the girl. I forgot what her name is. Oh, uh, but, Anna or something like that. But he's known on Trolla as Orko the Great, and all his magic works perfectly on Trolla. He gets to Eternia and everything's backwards. And the fun thing is when He-Man tries to go and help Orko on Trolla, he has, actually has to say the the Grayskull power of by the. I remember you know, that. He has to say it backwards yeah. because magic is backwards. Now, in this series, instead of going that on Trolla, Orko is, is known as great and powerful, they went with the idea that he's always... Never been that good, and his parents actually named him Oracle with great anticipation that he was going to be great, and he never lived up to it. That made him a bit more adept when he doesn't show up, and he fights off Scareglow. Yeah. That made it more powerful, but it is a very different Orko than what we've got in Filmation, although the nice little acknowledgement of his hero medallion that he yeah. got in the one episode for kind of saving the day. Yeah. And they gave him a medal. I like that the, you can that's on his dresser, and they gave a shot to that. So yeah. they do. There's a lot of... Easter eggs to the filmation, but there's, it's definitely not a direct sequel because there are some definite differences that they present to you. Yeah. Even Faker, because Faker was thrown off of an end into the abyss in the filmation series on this one. It seems to be the first time Faker has popped up because the sorceress has no idea what's happening. And the Faker in this one, even though he's not exactly like the toy, he doesn't have the hair. But he does look a lot more like the toy than the turn blue. Yeah, he's blue. He's, <laughs> he, he's blue, and yet it's more of a metal blue. Yeah, it was a light. And yet, if you go back to the original, which I have a toy of the original, he's more like just He Man with glowing eyes and with this robotic face. That's not the Faker we know from the right. comics, from the toy. Because I remember as a kid thinking, why did they ever make Faker? I'll be honest, I was slow, I guess, but uh, <laughs> the, I, I never understood that was supposed to be. Faker. <laughs> yeah. Because it was He Man's body colored blue like Skeletor with an orange version of Skeletor's. Yeah. And there's like a little, looked like almost like a little tape player looking thing it, it, on, on his chest underneath the little thing. Uh, huh. And I now know that because I just recently got the you action figure. the new one. Yeah. And underneath it. And, and then I looked, and originally they did do that. Underneath the, the orange uh, armor, they always had a sticker underneath it. Now it's, it's actually on there. Uh, mm. But it's like, a, I guess you want to say, uh, printed on there but used to it was a sticker which is a lot of stickers don't last i mean obviously yeah but because you know how kids are we, 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 we put them the in the bathtub even yeah. some of us did i i surely did not mine because i didn't have a faker back then but my orco and others they you know i played with them until they were gone y'all remember the orco you guys it would come with yeah a, it had a pool thing a pool and his thing, thing spin go around crazy. yeah I love that thing. Yes. <laughs> I had that one too. I, I wish I, I still had him. Yeah, I still have Orco. I still want an Origins Orco. Yeah. I can't find one anywhere. I like to get a Filmation Orco too, because that got, one looks great. I got both. Yep, I need to get one. <laughs> still want one. I still love Orco. Oh, and that's the thing, because I had I've I've watched this thing now three times. Uh but yeah, Heather, it my wife, of course, the you know, the bio nerd. Got to sit with, or the Wendy nerd, uh, yeah. sat with me to watch this because I told her, says, this is really good. Uh, you should watch this. And well, she that, was just crying when Orko died. Oh, Her, yeah. When Orko first showed up, she was like, yay, Orko. She yeah, just the same Orko. way. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, but I don't think he's dead. I think he's coming back. It still got to me, though. I got to admit. Yeah. Do you uh, see what a nerd I am? <laughs> yeah. But I, I was like, when he went, I was like, Orko, that you seem to have went out great. But I was like, no, I'm not accepting that. Yeah, I mean, I'm the dead. same way. Well, I, was, I, I will not accept that he will be back. I was like, I'm not. Going to say he's dead. I'm not either. He will be back. But overall, we enjoyed it. Uh, so I, I 
before you go and get piled on by all the stupid hate people are throwing at it for all this stuff, watch it for yourself. Yeah. And you know Judge what? for yourself. As you far probably as, will enjoy it. As far as people who don't like it, you know, it's each their own. There are some people who have legitimate things that when they, they watch it, some people had prejudged it before they even watched the first episode. Well, that's one of the things about uh, being online that I don't like is that uh, if you have a different opinion, and I'm talking about even people who don't like it and everyone else likes something. It's okay if, if you have your own opinion. It doesn't bother me. What I don't like is if a person uh, does like something or doesn't like something everyone else does. For instance, I don't like the new DC universe on movies most of the time. But uh, suddenly, because I'm more of an old school, and I am old school, yeah. but uh, I'm an old school guy. And suddenly, I'm an idiot. I'm a jerk. I'm all sorts of other things. And I'm like, oh, okay. It doesn't really bother me because I don't care. But at the same time, uh, there's no reason for cursing. Yeah. There's no reason or calling everybody a sexist. Yeah, it's like, you know they might actually have legitimate reasons, things they did not like about the series, but it's it's easy to just throw an insult at somebody instead of because I've talked to some people that they said, well, I didn't like how this was portrayed there, and I'm like, well, I think what they were trying to do is maybe this. So I think we'll see. You know, maybe in part two we'll see. Maybe you'll like the character yeah. better. You know, I was actually having discussion with people who had watched it. They were like, you know, this was you know okay, uh, but I didn't like this about it. And I've been actually able to talk about it yeah. and have a nice conversation with people. It's like, yeah. I can understand that, but there was times you know, here's that what I think they're Tita's doing character with that. So. was a little annoying at times, but I yeah. also understood the depth of the, what she was trying to do would yeah. be annoying. I'm talking about they were yeah. making her Tila had some purpose. selfish moments, definitely. But that being said, I also figured there was a lot better than there was bad. And so yes. it, and it didn't bother me much because after all, and pardon me for saying this, it is just a cartoon. It's not the end of the world. And yeah. some people have gone on about this stuff. And this sounds bad coming from a nerdy show, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But the it, it stuff is just entertainment. It's not the end of the yeah. world. It's it, and it's just for fun. I'm I'm just so thrilled to have something fun of human to watch again. Yes. I waited a long time. We really have. Yeah, I mean, when they made the last one, people were like, "Oh, that one's new." It's been twenty years nearly. It's been nineteen. Yeah, two thousand two is when that came yeah. out. Yeah, and I've waited, and I was upset that they stopped. I, making I still that. would like to have that DVD set. I had the video, but unfortunately, they're no longer good. Because they kind of broke. I watched them enough oh. that they broke. And I was mad. <laughs> yeah, I liked, I didn't get to watch the entire... I, I think I watched all of the first season, but I don't remember everything. I didn't get... I was busy, I think, doing other things. I didn't get to watch the second season where they brought in the Snake Men. Yeah, that's cool. They, I didn't get to see it. that. So it's like I said, they... they, they uh, there are some channels that show some of that, but it it makes me angry that the, we didn't get it all. But now we got this and I'm going to enjoy it the best yes. I can. I'm eager for part two, which I'm hearing could be... Maybe late 2021, if not early 2022. And sometime this winter, we should have part two. I look forward to it. I look forward to it. I will binge that thing. Yeah, me too. You better believe it. And of course, we'll talk about it all right here on the Fandom Nexus. Uh, well, I guess it's time to thank everybody and get ourselves out of here. I want to, of course, remind you all to get lost in an adventure. And we want to thank Karen Kennedy, Ricky Pope of Christian Nerds Unite, which, by the way, his show is doing a really cool thing. If you're into tabletop games, uh, he's doing a really cool thing on his show right now, his podcast. And, of course, Darren Wilhite of the Wilhite and Wall Show. Thank you all very much uh, for your help. Also, I want to thank everybody on Patreon. Remember, if you go to patreon.com slash Neverland Podcast, your help there really means a lot to keep us going. You can find us on Twitter, twitter.com Neverland PCast. On Facebook at Neverland Podcast, we have a Facebook group as well. Leave a voicemail at 816-226-6492 and go to the website, NeverlandPodcast.com. You can join the Neverlanders. We have our little kind of Lost Boys and Pixies little club that we've had for a long time, although we're, you know, because we're still Neverland, but we're we're a fandom nexus now. We've kind of moved a little bit further from Disney than we were before. But that's all for this week. Uh, I got a lot of fun planned for next week. We plan to have Chris Cowan. Uh, he's a writer for the Babylon Bee, also one of the hosts of Stunning and Brave, which is a very funny comedy show. Uh, we're going to talk some DC comics, talking about Batman Nightfall and the death of Superman. Planning to do that next week. So make sure you come back. A lifetime of hard work, children laughing in the kitchen, family photos on a restaurant wall, a legacy that lives on. 
It all comes from the power of a conversation, like the one Tommy Hall had with First Horizon Bank about taking over his father's Charleston-based restaurant business. Now the table is set for a whole new generation. First Horizon Bank, let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Tommy. First Horizon Bank, member FDIC. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection for a wide variety of statistics, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stat options are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million football fans who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash get100 and use code GET100. That's code GET100 at prizepicks.com slash get100 for a first deposit matchup to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy.